Hi, I'm Dr. Stan Kucher at TeenMentalHealth.org and I'm here to talk to you about mental health in young people and today I'm going to focus on a very difficult topic of youth suicide. Now, youth suicide is a tragedy for the family, it's a tragedy for the community, it's a tragedy for our society. However, that tragedy means that what we need to do is we need to implement those things which actually work to prevent youth suicide, which actually decrease the number of young people who die by suicide, or at the very least, decrease the number of suicide attempts, hospitalizations for those attempts, or visits to the emergency room because of attempts. So those are what our key outcome indicators need to be for any suicide prevention initiative. Unfortunately, most of the programs that are currently available in Canada don't have evidence that they actually address those key indicators. Some programs, which are very expensive and certainly are making their proponents a fair amount of money, tell you that they have been able to increase student knowledge about suicide or change student attitudes towards suicide. Unfortunately, there's absolutely no evidence that learning more about how suicide happens will in any way translate into decreased numbers of young people dying by suicide. Unfortunately, there is no good evidence that says that if you change attitudes towards suicide that has any impact on any kind of suicidal behavior. So what is it that we know actually can help young people who may be suicidal, who may be at risk for suicide? And I've heard people say that everybody is at risk for suicide, but this is just not true. Everybody is also at risk for for getting hit by a car, but the vast majority of people never get hit by a car. So it's a number of young people who are at high risk for suicide that we're looking at. So who are these young people? Well, number one, they're young people that have a mental illness. Do you know that if you have the mental illness called schizophrenia, that according to the research data between 5 and 15 percent, depending on the study, of people with that illness die by suicide? Do you know that if you have a bipolar illness, also called manic depression, that 20 to 25 percent of people, depending on the study, who have bipolar illness die by suicide? That's, 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 that's shocking statistics. Compare that to the annual rate of death by suicide in the usual adolescent population, which is less than 0.0001% of young people. So if we really want to get serious about decreasing rates of suicide, we don't bring programs that have no impact into schools and pretend that we're doing suicide prevention. No, we don't do that. What we actually have to start doing is educating young people so that if they have concerns about suicide, if they're experiencing suicidal ideation, that they will reach out to get help. We don't need to do that with a very expensive program. We can embed that information into usual school curriculum. The other thing is, is that we have to make sure that we can better identify young people who have mental illnesses early and get them into effective treatment as soon as possible. We know that effective treatment of people with mental illness decreases rates of suicide. We know that. So why aren't we doing what we know? Why are we spending lots of time, lots of resources, putting programs into play that have no evidence that they actually prevent suicide in young people? You know, like many of you that are listening to this, I have been personally touched by suicide. My reaction to that anguishing time was that I wanted to do everything that I could do to make sure that when we did suicide prevention, and we need to do it, 
that we did things that were effective. It's not okay simply to do something. It is essential that we do the right thing. Dr. Stan Kucher, teenmentalhealth.org. Thanks for listening.